Uh, hello, everyone. So I'm going to be giving a, a workshop on bootstrapping your Ethereum dApp with one simple command. Um, this is something that I worked on the past few days because um, I, uh, I wanted some requirements that I couldn't find. So yeah, we'll get right into it. So my name is David, and I am a developer experience engineer at Tyco Labs. Um, Tyco is uh, helping to scale Ethereum. It's a layer two ZK rollup. So if you're not familiar with rollups, it's essentially just taking some of the work off of Ethereum's main chain and doing it securely on another chain, which is called layer two. Um, there's a lot of different options out there for what we call bytecode equivalent environments. And what I mean by that is, um, you know, when you deploy to Ethereum, you're ultimately compiling a contract to some bytecode, which you, and that is the thing that actually gets executed by Ethereum's virtual machine. Um, so there's a lot of different options out there, Tyco being one of them, and we strive for really high equivalence. So the nice thing about uh, having these various environments that are quite similar in ways is that we can deploy to them um, in a similar fashion. Um, right, yeah, so I'll talk a little bit about what Tyco is doing. Um, so we, are, we consider ourselves to be a type one ZK EVM, as I said, and that means that we're Ethereum equivalent in the sense that we reuse execution clients such as uh, Geth, and we don't really change anything at all. So of course we don't change the EVM, but we don't change that the way um, the gas is priced for EVM execution, the gas co cost for the opcodes, and we don't change how, um, um, we don't change the storage trees either. Um, so to get back to the idea of the talk, which is uh, a lot about developer experience, the most important element here is that they are at least EVM equivalent um, and bytecode equivalent, so that you don't really need to change a lot of your workflow as a, as a Solidity developer. So we'll, we'll show that as well. Um, OK, so I wanted to just quickly go over how deploying contracts works on Layer 2. Um, in case you're not familiar with it. So to deploy a contract on layer one, you need some ETH that you send from some account and you create a contract um, to some node. And the way that it works on layer two is you need to have that same amount of ETH um, or some amount of ETH on the reflected in the layer two network. So the way that this works for most places, like how it works at Tyco, Optimism, and uh, there's also Base now as well, um, you basically collect some ETH from a layer one faucet, like a test faucet such as Gorli or Sapolia, and you send that ETH to your layer one account, and then you use a bridge to um, get that test ETH on layer two. And now that you have that test ETH on layer two, you should be able to create a contract um, by calling a layer two node, which as we said, should be uh, EVM equivalent. So you can just do the same uh, call to that node and you can deploy a contract um, and, and put it on the, the rollups state. Okay, so a little bit about what the tool is and um, why I'm presenting it here. Um, so it's basically a simple repo that you can just clone and um, it's laid out as a mono repo. There is a Svelte front end um, and it's pre-configured with some simple CSS components that you can just use. Um, it uses uh, WAGME, um, Web3 modal, and a, a new um, command line tool which is pretty cool called WAGME CLI. This is a way to make um, the ABIs generated automatically and um, have type safety. Um, I'm also using Foundry as the back end, so to speak, to develop the smart contracts. And just some sane defaults um, that are configured in the environment files, which I'll show. And also, I'll show you how we can configure this to automatically deploy to Fleek, um, which is kind of like Vercel. It's just a deployment environment. And I mainly uh, made this tool just because I found some of the other ones on GitHub 
lacking for what I wanted to do, um, specifically the integration with Foundry, uh, because I think Foundry is a really excellent tool and using Solidity uh, makes a lot more sense than JavaScript for the deployments and testing your contracts. So that's the first reason. And the second reason is I think we have a lot of builders here. Um, and I just want people to not have to think, especially new developers, to not have to think so much about how do I navigate all this new stuff that I have to learn, like uh, how do I deploy these contracts, how do I get them on these different layer twos like Tyco, Optimism, um, and, and just make it a more seamless experience so you know hackers and can just get to building and, and build something cool. Um, so the goal of this workshop is, yeah, just quickly get to hacking in your project. Um, I'd like developers and builders to focus more on learning than having to think about tooling um, and how to like just initialize all of these things to get started um, and give a seamless and easy workflow so that you, know, you can enjoy developing on Ethereum. And FYI, this stack is somewhat opinionated. Uh, mainly because I'm using Svelte, uh, when I think a lot of people are familiar with like React and using things like Rainbow Kit. It's, it's definitely has a broader ecosystem um, in the React world, so this is just an option for you. Um, if you wanted to use some of the more common tooling like Rainbow Kit, Next.js, definitely check out um, Scaffold ETH. And on top of that, you can just use this um, repository and tool, and you can pretty easily swap out the Svelte front end um, and use Next.js. So um, let's actually build it. I'll just put this here. Hello? OK. Um, cool, cool, cool. Uh, yeah, so this is the repo. It's um, it's. How do I share this link easily? I'll, I'll, if you want to try to pull it up, I'll leave this link up here if you do want to work on it now. or I'll have links at the end, but in case you wanted to walk through with me, this is the link. It's github.com slash d1onys1us slash dap hyphen slaps. Um, and yeah, we'll just walk through it together and show what this tool does. So you'll first be greeted by this readme, which will have a quick start. And the first thing that you need to do is just click on use this template. So we'll do that. And then we'll create a new repository. So you can just imagine you're you know, in, your, in your hacking group for the hackathon and you're just going through this workflow. Um, my, I'll just call this my demo repo. All right, so now I have the repo cloned, and I just need to take this repo that I created on GitHub and clone it on my local machine. So I just have an empty directory here, and I'll just follow this command to, um, oh, actually, let me grab it from here. Okay, so now I have the repo cloned. And the next step is execute the setup script. This is the quote unquote one command. I was trying to like, in the future I might do this in a slightly different way, but this should set up the whole project for you aside from just cloning it. Um, essentially it'll just install the foundry dependencies, um, install some node dependencies and copy over some environment files. So I'll just do that. <clears throat> Internet here is a little bit slow. Um, but the project uses PNPM, by the way, which is a little bit underrated, I think, especially at hackathons where the internet can be really slow um, because it, it caches the packages. So I'd highly recommend PNPM if your internet sucks. Um, OK, cool. So we're ready to rock. We executed the setup script. And yeah, th there are two other things we need to do here. So. Um, I think that it would be really useful for hackers um, to create a mnemonic, right? And the reason why you might want to do this is because 
Um, a mnemonic essentially means, if you're not familiar with it, is usually you have like a private public key pair. You're familiar with like your private key, but you can just create a mnemonic which maps to multiple keys. So if you want to have multiple test accounts, um, you can just create one mnemonic, and this is a really easy way to do it. It's also kind of suggested if you're out there hacking in the Wild West that you just don't use your normal accounts. So I suggest you can just create a mnemonic and um, I'm gonna just go here. It's really simple. You just can select ETH um, and just generate a mnemonic and here it is. Um, I already did it, but yeah, you can use this and, and, I'll and I'll show you where we can put that. So as I said here, you obtain a mnemonic and then you set the mnemonic phrase and packages app env so app that typo there um yeah so that would be right here i'm just gonna echo my current mnemonic i think i, I already have one i don't care that you can see it because there's not any real funds or anything important here um unless you want to just take my test net eth which i just have a little bit of um, so yeah, I set the mnemonic, and then the other thing we need to do is we need to get a um, Web3 modal project ID. Um, I'm using Web3 modal because it has good support for, um, um, for, for HTML, uh, which is what Svelte uses, and, and Rainbow Kit didn't work out as well. So yeah, you can click this link here, and you can get a, um, a project ID for Wallet Connect. Um, you just you need to sign up for an account and then you can get um, a key. So I also won't do that here, but it's really simple. You just get a key. And essentially, um, after we fill out these two environment variables, um, we can, oh, thank you. Okay, cool, thanks. Um, yeah, so after we set these things up, we can get to um, building. Um, let me just see if I have this on my, in my environment. Um, I don't, let me see here. I think I have it. Um, um, Okay, um, let me see if I can sign into this really quick and get the project ID. All right, here's the project ID. So I'll just copy that in here. And yeah. After that, we can um, source these environment variables so that our app uh, ends up having them. All right, let's see here. Um, okay, I have a, 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 a I, I use fish and it requires me to do environment variables like this. Um, let's see. Okay, I think. Okay, I think it's fine because I think my environment already has these um, variables, so um, it, it'll it'll all be good. Um, I'll, I'll be able to pick it up because it, it's already on on my path. Um, okay, so basically um, now I can just show you like how this workflow is going to actually work, um, and the way that I recommend doing this is you open up a few different terminal tabs. Um, so I'm going to open up three right here, um, and you can use whatever you want, just open up multiple windows. But um, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to start a local chain with Foundry, right? And Foundry uses Anvil um, in order to spin up this local EVM chain. So what I can do is I'll pass in the mnemonic that I have, and it'll use this to bootstrap all of the accounts. Um, so you can see here it uses this mnemonic, and now all of these accounts have some ETH, right? And what's really great about this is I can use one of these private keys, and I can import it into MetaMask, and then I can start testing with this. 
So now we have a local um, Anvil node started. And then one other thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to deploy a, um, a smart contract to this local Anvil chain. Um, that smart uh, contract you can find um, inside of the contracts folder here. Um, it's a really simple contract that just sets a string variable. Um, and I will deploy this. So to do that, I just do forge script deploy um, and I set the RPC to Anvil. Um, and you can see here, I've now um, created that contract on Anvil. Um, and there's also this utility called cast where you can interact with your local Anvil chain and you can get some information. For example, now the block number is one uh, because I just deployed a contract. So now I have this local um, Anvil chain running and um, I have a contract deployed to it. So now I can just start the app um, and I can just do this um, pnpm uh, filter command. Um, this is just a monorepo command and I just call the dev command to start up a local server. And yeah, I can essentially, let's see here. Okay, cool. So the reason why this error came is because we, um, I need to generate the ABIs from the contracts that we just deployed so that the front end can use those um, ABIs. So I'll go ahead and do that really quickly. So the way that works is I can just go here and I can do a pnpm wag me generate. Um, and by the way, all of these commands are written inside of um, the readme under common commands. So it'll be really easy for you to just uh, deploy something and generate these ABIs, et cetera. Um, so now I've uh, generated um, the ABIs. And if you want to take a look at, at how that works is um, if you go to this out folder, you'll see that it creates the um, ABI and the type definitions for um, the foo contract, which we'll interact with on the front end uh, web application. So now, um, ideally, this won't have an error. Um, all right, this is live debugging out here. So requires project ID wallet connect version two. So I think that this is um, because it is not reading this environment um, variable correctly. So I'm going to switch it back to this uh, original format and see if it works. OK, cool. It does. Um, awesome. So now you can see here um, um, that we have the app. We have like two components. You can use. Oh. Yeah, we have these two different page routes configured. Um, and we just have a simple. Um, um, way to write to the contract and, and, and read that string. Um, I'm going to, if you remember, I deployed on Anvil. So I'm going to switch to the, my local Anvil network um, and where I have some of this ETH. And let's see here. Um, and I think I need to configure um, the contract address. Um, so. Let's see here, you can, if you go to these um, template files, I show the things that you need to configure. So there's this um, foo address, um, which the app uses. I'm just gonna um, deploy the contract again, cause why not? Um, and it'll, the output will give me the contract address. Um, and now I have it here. Um, yeah, block number is two. So I'll set the contract address here. Um, and you can see here, it's now loading the, um, the message hello world, right? So this is like um, a really seamless experience now. So if you go into contracts um, where, um, where all, this, um, all, all of these, um, the foundry configuration is, um, you can change, like for example, I can just change this message uh, to something else and it won't show the new, the new message now because I didn't update the contract address and I also didn't deploy this. But now I can deploy this again to Anvil, right? And now I can take that contract address right here and I can put it in the, in the environment um, here. I can update it 
And now, um, did I get the right one? Let's see here. I think I copied an old address. I scrolled up too far. Um, Okay, cool. Now it says, hello world, change this message. So, and yeah, so that's essentially how we can deploy contracts um, really easily. And, um, you know, you can deploy these to other chains as well. For example, um, at Tyco, um, we have a, a, de um, an, a dev net right now, a test net coming uh, soon. We, we just had our original test net and we're having another one soon with um, zero knowledge proofs integrated. but um, I can deploy to that RPC as well. So for example, um, I need to put this legacy flag, which is sometimes needed um, if the rollup doesn't support EIP uh, 1559 yet. Um, so yeah, I'll wait on the receipt. This is a dev net, so it could take a little bit longer to deploy the contract. But yeah, you can see we, we were deploying to our local Anvil node, um, which is great for rapid development, but I think a lot of people are also going to be wanting to build on layer twos. So uh, we can just show how, how we can do that as well with pretty much the exact same experience that I had deploying on, um, on Anvil. Like nothing has changed at all. I literally just changed the RPC here um, from Anvil to Tyco. Um, and it's the exact same experience. So now I can take this contract address. Um, I can update the contract. Um, I can update it. And then all I would need to do is switch the network to Tyco. Um, and yeah, now it has this message for this deployed contract. And if I want to update something like, hey, new message. Um, yeah, I'll just write to the contract, update the message. Um, Again, it is a dev net, so it might take a little bit. See how the transaction's doing. Um, yeah, in, in the meantime, I can walk a little bit through uh, the, um, more, more through the code base. So let's see here. Essentially, um, if you want to run any kind of, you know, um, you can run everything from the root of the monorepo. So you want to compile your contracts, you just do like a forge build. Um, you can do forge test and you can run some tests. Um, and also if you want to install some other library, like for example, I think one popular one, I think is a little bit of a bigger package, but I can try to install the open Zeppelin library. Um, okay. Like Git sub modules wants me to have a clean staging area. Um, what is the difference here? Anyways, I'll just check out these changes and I'll just show how we can install um, some, some libraries that we can use in our contracts, like Open Zeppelin. Um, you can also use like Soulmate and, and, and other popular Solidity contracts. Um, yeah. So I think the internet's just a little bit slow. Um, and you can see here now the message was updated. Um, so yeah, it's, it's um, I'll just cancel out of this because it's taking too long, but I'll just show how we can, you know, we can deploy to really any EVM equivalent layer two. That's kind of the takeaway that I wanted to give. Uh, um, you know, for example, here I can deploy to base as well, which was built on the OP stack. Um, and yeah, this will just take a little bit. But yeah, now the uh, contract is on base. So you can see, you can just really deploy this on any layer two easily and um, kind of have, this, have the same experience. Um, and yeah, if you, if you walk through this repo, it's, it's defined like um, pretty simply. You have a, um, a WAGME uh, client, which is inside of a, a globally accessible store. If you look at the main component, which I showed uh, during the demo, you'll see here that um, the ABIs are automatically read in from that uh, as they're generated. So you don't have to worry about passing around ABIs or anything like that. You can just generate it after you compile your smart contract. And 
yeah, that's essentially the tool. Um, the last thing that I just wanted to show here is like after you um, you uh, do do this project, you just um, after you clone the repo, you create your your, your own. Um, you can set it up to have um, deploys to Fleek, so that you know if you're working on a team and you want to see um, how deployments and things work, you can just uh, get automated deployments. So I'll just show that really quickly. Um, I know I only have a few minutes left here, but um, let's see here. Maybe I have another example of this. Um, All right. Cool, cool, cool. Um, so I'm just going to add a new site just so you can see the full workflow of how this works. Um, I'll go to a personal GitHub account. I created this, uh, my demo repo that we did in the beginning. I'll just do the default steps. You don't need to worry about any of these build commands or anything like that because I already configured it inside of this um, Fleek. Uh, JSON file, which will install Foundry, it'll install Forge, um, it'll generate the types, and um, yeah, it'll it'll build the DAP. Um, so yeah, you really just need to click the deploy site, um, and after that's done, I'll just demo this by making some random file. I'll just add that. Um, and I'll just push it up to GitHub. So now you should probably see um, on this my demo re app repo that, yeah, there's a job triggered now. Um, and this will just um, deploy the app so that you can just share it and, um, and use it. So yeah, and it, it, you can also configure it so that it, will show deploys on uh, branches and PRs that you make, and it'll show deployment previews. So um, the future for this tool is kind of like to um, add some Next.js support via command line installer. So if you don't want to use Svelte, you don't have to. Um, yeah, I think Svelte is like really, uh, really simple to use. So it could be a good option, but we should give people the option to choose what they like to build on. Um, the, uh, an, another item that I'd like to have is kind of just automatically resolving these contract addresses on network change. So as you were seeing, I would deploy to some network, like I deployed to my local Anvil node, I deployed to Tyco, I deployed to base, and I got a contract address each time. I would need to update the environment um, of the DAP to know what is the contract address that I'm dealing with. So it's kind of like only aware of one chain. So one thing that we, uh, I'd like to do here is just automatically resolve those contract addresses. So as you change the network, it knows what the corresponding contract addresses are. Um, and yeah, you know, we're just trying to like minimize the amount of things that you need to think about. Um, really just want developers to come and build on Ethereum and layer twos. So feel free to just clone the repo and get started. It's not gonna be a lot of steps to just start building something. And yeah, it's, it's just uh, developer experience is something really important um, at Tyco and just Ethereum in general um, to get more people on board. And yeah, thank you very much. Um, I hope you find use out of it. Uh, you can scan the QR code to learn more about Tyco. And as I said, we have a upcoming uh, test net with uh, zero knowledge proofs integrated and you can follow us on Twitter for updates. Um, also feel free to open PRs to the repo. Um, and we would love to like, or I, I would like to make it more of like a public good kind of a thing. I don't want to just maintain like a separate fork or anything like that. If this is something, um, if these ideas can be implemented in a more popular project like scaffold, um, I would love to just merge these in there as like an alternate branch and we can just work on making this a great experience. 
And lastly, if you have like any questions at all about building um, dApps or building on Ethereum, or you have problems with a tool throughout the Biddle week, um, just feel free to DM me on Twitter, um, hit me up at my email address, and I can, I can help out. So thank you very much for your time. And um, I think I at least have at least two minutes for some questions, if anyone has any. Uh, yeah, um, honestly, I don't have that much experience like um, using uh, the, the hard hat version. Even this foundry one to be, you know, just, just to show you, like you can learn these things really quick. Um, but the experience with um, foundry was pretty good. And, but, but the problem you might've noticed is that we, every time we update the ABI, right, you need to go in and you need to do a, um, this generate, right, which kind of sucks. Like, screw that. So what you can do, I just didn't show this, um, but you can create a new tab, right? And what I can do is I can do a watch um, and I can watch this broadcast folder. So every time you deploy on um, Foundry, this broadcast folder will get updated and it'll show for each, cha for each chain the contract address and, um, and everything like that. It'll give details about the transaction. So every time we get a change here, we can just generate it on the fly. So these kinds of hooks are things that um, we want to have and like build in the tool. I just thought it felt like a lot to say, you know, generate, you know, create this watch script, create the local anvil and everything. But I think you can have a really frictionless um, experience um, just using this watch flag. Yeah. All right, then. Uh, thank you very much.